Hi all, I'm Maylene Velasquez, a licensed clinical social worker and a registered play therapist. And I was hoping today that we can talk about a couple of different ways that we can help clients to express emotions. Whether we're talking about very mad feelings or sad feelings or scared feelings or anything that might be distressing to the people that we're working with. We're gonna talk about feeling, labeling it and expressing it. And this is an intervention to use with a little bit of older children. The first thing that we want to do is that we want to check in with the client as to what is happening and what they're feeling and if they're able to what they're thinking and where are they feeling it in their bodies. When possible, I think it's really important to create body awareness so that we can know what it is that we need to do for ourselves and so that we're helping clients to ground when they're experiencing difficult emotions. So after the client is aware of what it is that they're feeling and we've labeled it, so let's say that we're gonna do mad, then I'll ask the client to think about a way that they can show me that mad feeling. Depending on the age and what the client has available to them, we can use different creative ways to have the client express their emotions. Whether it is a drawing, we can have the client show us what mad looks like for them. And so this is an example of my mad of not being able to go outside. If they have access to pipe cleaners, here's another example of mad. Cute mad, but mad. If they have toys, then they can use a couple of toys to represent the emotion that they're experiencing. So here's something that I'm using to represent mad. I'm not sure that you can see it. So here's a super mad dragon and he has a yucky icky warm around him. I'm thinking that this is the reason why he's mad, but he's mad. Something else to consider is Lego. So here's an example of mad. Or it can be something as simple as this. Whatever the client's using, you also want to um, be engaged and you want to be showing how you would express the emotion which whatever, with whatever you have. Engaging with the client is the way that I was trained. You feel free to use and to gear the interventions according to how you were trained and supervised and what you feel like your clients need. Once the client has created the representation of the feeling, then we wanna engage in a little bit of conversation about what does this emotion feel like? What is it like to hold it? What is it saying? What is the emotion feeling and thinking? What is it trying to communicate but can't? What makes it mad or sad or scared? What does it need to feel a little better? And as you're asking those questions, you can encourage a client to think about what it is that they're feeling, what they're experiencing, and as they're processing the, their responses. You can also encourage them to show you with whatever it is that, they're, that they have um, to express their emotions, to show you the responses to all of those. An example would be if I'm asking a child, what does it feel like to hold this one? I would say that it looks like it would be soft, but it's actually quite prickly and it kind of hurts, especially if you're trying to contain it. If I'm doing it with the Lego, I may say it feels cold and it feels hard and it's difficult. Whatever the client says, the way that they respond, make sure that you're taking time to validate, um, to create space so that the client can have their emotions and that can feel grounded in what they're experiencing. And because sometimes by playing it out, by speaking it out, we help to transform the emotion. And so we're thinking of coming to the end of the intervention, then we wanna ask clients to think about all those different questions about what it needs to feel better or what it's trying to communicate, and then to create a different representation of this feeling with their needs met, with what they need, with what they're trying to communicate, with the feeling of being understood. If the client did a drawing, then they're gonna do a different one where they're gonna uh, communicate a different way that they're feeling, right? And this is mine, it might look different for the people that you're working with. With the pipe cleaners, I might choose to do something like this where I'm making it safer for that emotion to be expressed. Or with a Lego, we might put a door from the top to the back where they can go in their backyard and maybe do something fun. Whatever it is that your client needs, make sure that they're having a way to 
think about what is it that the emotion needs and how do they troubleshoot between what they're feeling to what they need in order to create safety. As we do that, we're helping clients to lower levels of cortisol in their body. We're helping them to figure out the difference between what they can control and what they can't so that they're able to get a little bit more of a sense of, I am not powerless. I can't change A, B, and C, but I can make a difference over this. And this is what we wanna to give to clients. That sense of empowerment, that in everything, there is something that we can control, as long as there is safety and stability and that clients are not in a dangerous situation. So this is a quick example of creative ways that we can help our clients to express distressing emotions via telehealth. I hope that this was useful and helpful to your practice. If there's anything else that you would like to see or hear, please feel free to let me know. Thank you, bye.